All right. So thank you all for spending time with me. It's really awesome to speak with you and for you folks. It's, it's an incredible event. I'm really, really happy and proud to be a part of it. So my talk is called Real-Time Data Visualization with Svelte. So before I dive deeper into the talk itself, I would love to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vadim, as I already mentioned. So like, uh, I'm a front-end developer and a developer advocate. Uh, and at Developer Advocates, we do nothing and everything at the same time. Uh, but uh, jokes aside, I focus on developer experience, content creation, and doing fun stuff on the internet just to make sure you folks are supported for the products I work for. So basically, you have an opportunity to get content that help you to move faster, more confident, and just to understand how you can benefit for specific tools uh, I interact with. But today, our you know, a special day for me specifically. So I want to, you know, like use this opportunity to brag a little bit uh, and also do some warnings. So three things are happening for the first time. So what are those? The first thing, I'm speaking at the Svelte Summit for the first time. And this is incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. Because uh, I didn't expect this to be like such a welcoming, like family-like community. Because usually, like we are like a family is a red flag in tech industry. But here it's another story because like I actually feel like it's like a family vibe because like it's like everybody knows each other. It's really comfy community. So I really regret that I joined it only now, but really lucky to be a part of it right now. So besides that. I'm exploring this belt lore a little bit deeper, because before that, I was like on a hello world level. Uh, so that is not something I'm proud of. But it's a great opportunity for me to like learn in public by this talk. And also, hopefully, I will encourage some of you to maybe like become a speaker one day. Like if you're not you know, sure if you want to do it or not, this is a great opportunity for you to say, like, yeah, just do it, because it's such a fun experience. And you're able to learn something new for yourself and help others to feel more confident as engineers. And I'm using RevBuild.js for my slides. So this is something I yeah, regret doing, because I, I, apparently I don't like, you know, like a comfy, like, smooth life. So like I introduced another complexity. So if something will look a little bit awkward on slides, I apologize. I tried my best to like, make it look good. But let's actually focus on the talk itself. So why real-time data viz in the first place? And this is like a screenshot of a really like typical you know, dashboard analytics. And you see those all the time. I don't have to introduce you to like what some analytics tools are. You for sure saw some version of it. But let's just, just break it down like for, just to, for us to understand like the problem statement and what we're working with like on a deeper level. So real-time data is, is mostly like for stocks, analytics, and other tools, like for example, personal money trackers or some kind of like fitness tracker or whatever else. So like it's everywhere, data is everywhere. So we work with data like on a various forms and like shapes and basically like you need it. Uh, and there are some specific needs for that. So it should be really fast, really performant, and basically you don't want to wait and you want data to be like very informative and helpful, and it should be like a good UI and a good UX. And Svelte is the real deal here. Uh, this is just you know like just a hook for the next upcoming part of the talk. But Svelte is a real deal here with the D3 help. Uh, obviously, D3 is not the only solution, but in the scope of my specific talk, D3 is a part of the stack I'm using. Uh, so let's talk a little bit specific about like things I used uh, in my setup. Basically, this talk is going to be like me introducing like how I actually built it, so like my specific implementations. So let me know if it makes sense to you after the talk. So I'm really open for the conversation. Just you know, elaborate and just you know like see how you feel about that, how you think about that. So I use state basically to be redundant for reactive state. Uh, I use derive for computed values. I use defect to run basically the whole heart of the uh, real-time data visualization and plotting. And I use, obviously, props to declare components props. That's it. That's not the only things that are available with runes. There are a lot more. But this is a chunk of those that are available that you can actually use and uh, build things. So for my specific use case, that was enough. But yeah. Let's proceed to the next thing. So enough of that chit-chatting. Let's actually see the code itself. Uh, so I use SvelteKit just to kind of like get the boilerplate like for my project, just because like I wanted something like quick and simple, just to kind of like have the foundation. And obviously, majority of yours, 
or if not all of you, are familiar with how to create this, but still, why not include this as a slide? Uh, so, yeah, this is the entire setup of my project. I didn't want to overthink it. I didn't want to make it too complex, so it just the page itself, where I displayed basically the chart and the chart component itself. For the simplicity of just explaining like how it could, how the foundation of that could look and how you can scale from there, that is more than enough. Uh, so let's just really quickly focus on the chart component itself because like first I want to introduce like how the chart component looks and then we will transition to the page component and see like how we generate the data and kind of like pass it over to the chart component itself. So first, Obviously, I imported D3 because it's going to be used quite often. And also, I declare some things uh, as a props. The props is basically the data. Data is going to be an array that I pass over uh, from the page level. That's basically where I'm going to generate the whole data set, the whole like mock data. Uh, so it's going to be an array that I pass to create some you know, visualization. And also, I just define like very basic set of props just to kind of like set up the width, height, and some specific margins to kind of like display the, the whole chart, the whole plot. Uh, I spe specifically don't pass it from the page level. I just define it as like hard-coded values because like that's enough for the demo. But for the sake of responsiveness and for the sake of like some dynamicness, you can work with that uh, from the page level and, you know, pass it from there. So the next part is uh, some specific set of variables that I use for DOM reference, basically the SVG variable, uh, two variables that are related to axis, and the path element, basically, which is used as state, uh, and later on you will see like why is it, it, it is a thing. And next, uh, for the chart component, I have the last value, previous value. This is basically for me to kind of like create the line itself, and I have the spiked value, uh, the right value. So basically, this is the one I use for animating. Like, if the differentiation between the, like two specific points is going to be too large, there's going to be like a pulsing effect, and you will see in a few slides how it's going to look from the code perspective uh, and CSS animation perspective. So, just to summarize, I'm using force, uh, using props to uh, for the data input. I'm tracking DOM elements with the state, and I'm computing the right values with derived to be a little bit redundant, but yeah. Uh, so. Now let's focus about on the like the implementation. Sorry, not the implementation, but integration of two tools. Basically, this file in D3 itself. So I use effect. This is basically the whole heart, the whole foundation of like how it actually generates things. Uh, and here, I'm starting to use D3 API. So basically, uh, const x and const y. Obviously, it's responsible for the axes. Uh, and the line itself, it focuses on the line for the chart. So this is all we need to kind of like make a very simple, like basic foundation we can work with as a starting point. Uh, the next part is basically updating that data with uh, values so we can ha get, get like, you know, like some kind of dynamic value. And the, with the effect power, we basically get this update, like it triggers every single time something updates uh, from the data perspective. So next part is obviously styling. So from the styling perspective, I apply some, you know, consistent hard-coded styles. I'm something I don't want to kind of like mess with. I just declare it once and don't work again with it. So this is just, you know, uh, kind of like some CSS that I need to kind of like visualize that stuff. And the next stuff is uh, the, um, basically the way I an animate that stuff with the CSS. So here I use this stroke dash array property to uh, kind of like affect uh, the, the, the animation part. And also I use the browser uh, feature, uh, the get bound, bounding client rect, which is basically, the, you can look it up on the MDN, it's something that is available for you uh, with the browser. So just to kind of like trigger the animation part. So with the powers of some CSS and some browser API, you can actually just re-trigger the uh, browser just to kind of like force two animation to run again. And this is the SVG template. This is basically this, the, 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 this, this specific point of the chart, the specific like circle on the chart that is going to be uh, affected once we kind of like trigger the effect part uh, to be, again, a little bit redundant with the naming. Uh, but yes, uh, you can see that here I pass the path element to the path of the SVG element and also for uh, using the each, uh, cycle, I kind of uh, create the circle element on the chart, 
and also uh, I have the conditional pulse class. Um, this is the stuff that is uh, related to the differentiation between values, which allow you to kind of like see uh, if the value is, if the differenti differentiation between two values is too big, we basically see the Paulson effect. And obviously some CSS just to kind of like make the actual pulse effect happening. So obviously some SVG specific classes just to kind of like for, you know, coloring and stuff. Uh, and then just uh, the animation itself. So nothing too outrageous, very simple, very minimal set of styles. So next, now we can, you know, transition to the page component just to see like how we can actually pass the data and how we generate that stuff. So we import the chart component. Uh, then next, we define the data, uh, and we like kind of like define it as array, with, like empty array of state, and, and using state uh, rune for that specifically. Uh, I use like you know you can use 50 points, and like for I just simplified it for the demo itself, just for the 10 points, but it's up to you like for the limitation. But obviously, like for the real thing, you're going to have limitation, and you're going to work with web sockets because you know like having like working with like huge amount of data is not really uh, scalable, if you will. Uh, so for this example, it's just, you know, like 50, 10, up to you, like, what's the limitation? And obviously, like, I just simulate because, like, this is a mock data, so, like, using the set interval, I just, you know, uh, kind of, like, simulate the, uh, the real-time effect, like, just receiving that data from somewhere. Uh, and this is the basic, very simple uh, implementation of the, of the like, the, the markup, the, the, like, the template itself. So it's just a div with a chart, and I pass the data, which is the only prop, if you remember, from the chart component, which was not defined with a default value, and this is the only prop that I should use to kind of like pass the data so the chart can be, uh, you know, like created. Basically, the line itself on the chart can be created. And some styles. So <clears throat> I would love to talk, like, just to reiterate, just to kind of like sum up with some key patterns I used. Uh, using the props, uh, I kind of like passed or defined the component inputs. Next, try, I did like perform the track and DOM element with a state. Uh, next, uh, obviously, again, I'm being a little bit redundant, but computing derived values with derived. Uh, next, uh, basically, the heart of the whole setup is the effect uh, room, basically, report, which is like responsible for changes, basically triggered every single time we like update the data. And the conditional class application would be like uh, class name and then the condition itself, which kind of like triggers the uh, implementation of additional class if we need one. Uh, and the animation concept. So for the SVG animation, uh, I use stroke dash array and stroke dash offset. That basically helped me to uh, kind of like manipulate the styles as I expect those to look. And you will see in a second how it's going to look. So the CSS current frames animation, uh, I use those for basically the pulsing effects, basically where if the differentiation is a little bit large, uh, so you will see uh, the pulsing effect. Uh, next, the conditional animation with pulse, again, like it's kind of the same thing. And with like the get bounding client rect, uh, I trigger out, I trigger the browser to kind of like force the animation again for the new value, the update of the value. And now I would love to just to show you how this whole thing actually looks. Boom, boom, and now if I refresh, so this is a chart, and yeah, it generates, like I limited it to the 10, so you can see the pulse and effect, you can see updating the value, and it generated 10 values, and here is the whole chart, the whole uh, kind of like real-time data visualization, and Svelte is responsible for the DOM manipulation, and D3 is responsible for actually drawing this kind of like chart. So just to summarize that stuff, uh, I do just want to kind of like address the developer experience part because uh, this was actually really satisfying for me to see because with like with Svelte, I get like really minimal boilerplate. I was focusing on the right thing and I was just not, you know, overcomplicating things for myself. With React, it's a little bit more verbose and a little bit, you know, like more complex like in terms of the implementation and you should take care of more things. And with Angular, it's just, you know, like a proper ceremony. You should just, you know, like create a lot of like boilerplate code. It's good for maybe like scalability and just like for consistency if you're working with large teams because like some kind of code convention maybe 
uh, that exists from the default is good for you know that same sort of purpose. But for my specific case, it was just like a meh moment because uh, for well, actually did what I needed and it was actually like the minimalistic proper setup that offered me like everything that I need to kind of create the setup. So as the closing thought, I would love to kind of address that D3 and Svelte is like absolutely powerful for data visualization and it just was very straightforward to use, very minimalistic and very effective in a way because like I just created a bunch of variables, passed the right data, animated that stuff with CSS and generated the mock data. Simple as that. Not overthinking that, it's not working with like some React hooks just for introduction of a new level of complexity. Then with SVG, uh, with reactive bindings, uh, that allowed me to kind of like simplify the complex visualization, one, two, three, visualizations. Uh, and uh, basically, this animation was a lot easier because of the uh, reactivity of Svelte. So I basically, like this values helped me to use SVG and CSS uh, to kind of like animate that stuff without a lot of code. Basically, I have like a, a bunch of uh, dynamic variables and a bunch of CSS values that allowed me to do that. And performance benefits of Svelte was just a, a fantastic and incredible for a complex dashboard because I already can see that uh, I don't need to kind of like think too much about how to kind of like scale it from there for a small data, data set, for a larger data set, and for the even larger data set, like, like some enterprise level, you obviously use some kind of bank at logic and just, you know, like, isolate the front end and keep it simple, uh, and the Svelte part handles that amazingly. So that was it. So thank you so much. It was a great pleasure speaking with you folks. Feel free.